here's a little bit of history. Testosterone was derived from the bull testicle way back in the day. What are you talking about? That's what how we got talking? testosterone as far as like TRT or supplements taking in testosterone. It was first came from the bull testicle. Wow. So that's how we got hmm. steroids. That's how we got hormone replacement therapy with testosterone. It was derived or it was taken from the testes of a bull. Wow. So, I mean, there you go. A little bit of history for you. Oh, that's incredible. I know, right? What's up, guys? Todd the Pharmacist here with Josh Graves, and this is the No Bullshit, Just Bullfit podcast. Uh, let's talk about, you know, how you got into working out and bodybuilding. Sure. I've been obsessed ever since I was a little kid. I grew up watching Rambo, Terminator, seeing Hulk Hogan, you know, just seeing these these buff monster men. Mm -hmm. And as a little kid, I just thought that's what I wanted to look like. They had the confidence, they had the muscles, they had the attention, they had all these things that to me just looked so cool. And so growing yeah. up as a little kid, I thought, well, when I'm older, I'm going to exercise so I can look and, and feel and, and act like these, you know, my heroes on screen. And uh, I remember my dad, he was, a, he was a big weightlifter when he was younger. And uh, he wouldn't let me really touch the weights until I was about 14 or 15 years old. He, he wanted me to grow as much as I could. Oh, yeah. And I'll always remember that Christmas, uh, 14 years old, uh, we got a weight set in the basement. And then it was, oh, it, was, cool. it was game on. Uh, he and knew so, you were wanting to oh, do it. Man. Yeah, we got a little dumbbell 14. set. We got a bench. Uh, and we're talking like old concrete weights that had plastic like wrapped around it like old school concrete with plastic <laughs> yes. wow those plastic. are old school yeah i remember going from the concrete with plastic all the way to like a rubber but yeah i just remember getting that weight set and then it was game on uh, and i've always loved like sports growing up especially basketball um and so i was able to you know stay fit during the year um, but then as i got older uh trying to put on more muscle mass being tall was a little more difficult for me i discovered creatine which made just the biggest difference in high school and uh, just, you know, the more I did it, the more I loved it. And then as I started to learn the science behind it, kind of the nerdy aspect of it, that's when I fell in love with it. I realized it wasn't all about genetics. It wasn't all about, you know, just taking a ton of steroids. There was more to it. And if I could learn, you know, those little tricks and tips and learn the science behind what causes what in the body, I can manipulate the body in a way to grow. And that's just kind of what led me to, to you and Bullfit. Maybe you could tell me, Todd, what does creatine do? Why is it so effective for me? So creatine is maybe my favorite individual ingredient for overall performance. And kind of you touched based on it. There weren't any pre-workouts pre that had the full five grams of creatine monohydrate in every scoop. The reason that I love creatine is it's been shown time and time again with over 500 clinical studies that it builds muscle, burns fat, increases physical, mental, and cognitive performance. The thing with creatine is you need to take it every single day. It's not like a, a dose of caffeine, where when you get a shot of it, you get the energy, you go to town, and then it's out of your system in a few hours. Creatine, you need to build it up in the muscles. And ultimately what it does, it just helps recycle our energy source when it comes to lifting weights and exercising. So if you can take it on a daily basis, consistently, you're gonna build up enough of that storage in the muscle that when you need it to push weights, to run faster, to swim harder, you're gonna have that readily available to recycle that energy to keep you going longer and harder. One of the things that I've noticed as a pharmacist is adherence for patients is difficult, meaning it's difficult to do the same thing every single day. So when taking creatine either post-workout or on the side, a lot of times we forget, we don't have time, uh, or we're just not paying attention. Having it in the pre-workout makes it easy, simple, and it's just as effective pre or post this way and make sure you get that dose every single day consistently, which is going to show those results. Creatine is not something that you take once you get the benefit. It's something that you have to take consistently oh, yeah. every single day. Okay. I see so many people say, Oh, I take creatine. I'm like, okay, how much do you take? They're like, Oh, I took one on Monday. Mm -hmm. Took a dose on Monday. It's Wednesday. I'm like, Oh gosh, you know, <laughs> it's not doing very much. You can't do much yeah. at all. Why do you have to keep taking it every day? And why is that so important? I used to say I took creatine back in the day mm -hmm. and I was like this kid, you know, I took it, you know, three, two times a week. And then I'm like, Oh, I take creatine. I'm like, and then I read that you'd have to take it every day. And then I saw huge results there taking it every day. Absolutely. It was kind of, I, I just, I hope we nail it on the head for folks that if you take in particular bodacious before your pre-workout every day, 
you're taking the recommended dose that will increase your muscle mass. Absolutely. And just like anything else in the body, after we utilize that creatine, it becomes a byproduct and then we filter it out of our system. So creatine just doesn't stay in our body. We take it once a week and it lasts the whole week. We're filtering it out consistently. Anytime we're utilizing energy, we're pretty much utilizing creatine for that energy. And after we've utilized that creatine, we then create a byproduct called creatinine and then that gets filtered out of the body. And so we have to consistently replenish that storage of creatine. And that's why you want to take it on a daily basis to maintain those benefits. If you take it once, it's going to help. But you're not going to see the results as far as muscle building, fat burning, mental and cognitive performance if you're not taking it consistently. Wow, that makes sense. And then there are many forms of creatine out there. A lot of these companies are using these newer forms that they say are better, more efficient, better absorbed. There's a recent study that was done just this last year that looked at all these different forms of creatine. They tested them, they studied them, and they found that nothing is superior than creatine monohydrate. Yeah. Which is the original form. It's what's been tried, tested, and it's safe to take on a daily basis. Back in the day when we were experimenting with different um, ingredients and whatnot, mm -hmm. I noticed when I take it at night, I feel refreshed in the morning. Mm -hmm. I was really surprised that nobody talks about the, those types of benefits. Mm -hmm. No, creatine goes, so there's a reason why creatine is my favorite ingredient. Mm -hmm. It just, throughout the entire body, has such a positive effect. And, I mean, we're talking everything from energy to focus to, to sleep. Um, it just, it helps across the board. Uh, but once again, it's that consistent dosing, the five grams every day. Yeah. Uh, but there are benefits as low as one gram. So the keys to get really between that one and five grams of creatine. Okay. So if you're maybe 120 pounds, 130, you don't need five. Not necessarily. Five won't hurt. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, one gram is, is fantastic. And the other thing is we get creatine in our, in our diet. Creatine's high in beef. It's high in fish and it's high mm -hmm. in chicken. Uh, it's high in pork. So if you're eating meat, you are getting creatine naturally. Uh, okay. those that are considered vegetarian, uh, or they, you know, follow a vegan diet, they, they're not able to get the creatine. And so it's actually necessary, uh, for those specific diets to supplement with creatine every single day. Wow. And you have more and more vegetarians and vegans coming. Absolutely. As a pharmacist, it's one of my biggest concerns when I hear someone saying, Hey, I'm going to try the vegetarian diet. I'm going to try the vegan diet. It's like, that's great rock and roll. Uh, but you need to make sure you're, you know, getting specific ingredients that you're not going to get from plants. And one of those is creatine. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. So I know we keep talking about creatine, but it's so important. I remember when I was like, you know, 14 and going to the gym and my dad gave me creatine. Mm -hmm. He was like, yeah, this is a good dad great. right there. My oh, gosh. Yeah. Huge Marine bodybuilder dude. You know, he, he gave it to me. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I, I told my friends like, holy cow, I got this great pump. This is incredible. Have you guys heard of creatine? And then they would say, oh, yeah, my dad says that will kill you or whatever it mm -hmm. is. I'm like, my dad just spoon feed it to me. <laughs> Get out there. But um, why was everybody so scared of creatine yeah. back then? What was up with that? So back in the day, it was a newer ingredient. It was a newer supplement. Um, and so there were, concern there were some concerns. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say some of the more talked about concerns. Uh, one, I was asked if it was a straight up steroid, which it's not a steroid at all. Uh, two, it was uh, hard on the kidneys. I heard that one a lot. Uh, I think that came about because a byproduct is called creatinine. Um, so after we utilize the creatine up in the, in the body, we have this, this byproduct called creatinine, which the kidneys will filter out. Well, one way that they look at kidney function is they measure the creatinine that's in your bloodstream. And if it's too high, it means your kidneys aren't, aren't working properly. It's not able to filter it out. So people would think, well, if you're taking creatine and you're creating creatinine, it's hard on your kidneys. Well, we now have 20 years you know, of literature uh, showing that it's safe on the kidneys. There's even been studies done with individuals with one kidney, and it's been safe. Um, now, of course, you can abuse any substance. So as long as it's taken within the, the proper dosing frame, uh, no negative effects on the kidney. Uh, I've heard things that it's hard on the heart. The opposite. It's great for heart health. It's great for those cells within the heart. Um, I've heard that it can dehydrate you. It actually helps with hydration. Um, it's hard on the stomach. The one thing that creatine can do is it can cause a little bit of bloating or stomach discomfort. However, the main reason that was the case back in the day 
was because it was taught to do a loading dose. So they would say, hey, for your first seven days of taking creatine, we're going to put 20 to 30 grams in a single dose, and you're going to load up. You're going to saturate your muscles of that creatine. At that high of a dose, of course, you're going to have some bloating, some stomach discomfort. Um, but what we found over the years, once again, because there's so much literature on it, you just need that five grams, you know, one to five grams every single day. You're going to avoid that bloating, di abdominal discomfort, and you're going to saturate the muscles just fine. At first, there were these rumors. It was a new ingredient. It was a new supplement. It was working almost too effectively, so there had to be something wrong with it. And so we came up with all these ideas and thoughts. Now we have time. We have tests. We have literature that it's safe. It's effective. And anyone, and I mean anyone from high school to the elderly, can supplement with creatine on a daily basis, and they will notice a positive effect. I'm a believer that across the board, just about everyone should be on it every single day like a multivitamin. I believe it. Now even when I talk about creatine to my wife, she's like, oh, yeah, all the bloggers are talking about it. Now it's yep. so safe. Everybody's now talking yep, about it. Absolutely. And it's really cool to see because it really does help. It's a game changer. And it's not one of the supplements or it's not one of the ingredients that you notice right away. It's something that you start to notice over time. And once again, I'm going to I'm going to hound it. I'm going to hit it again and again and again. Consistency. And that's why here at Bullfit, we have it in that pre-workout. Okay, so make sure you are taking Bodacious and or Cowabunga, taking it regular, Absolutely. regularly for that full benefit. And right. I've, I'm a believer that other than the caffeine, if, if there's a day where you don't want the stimulation, I take it even when I don't go to the gym. Right. For those specific ingredients for just overall performance, for me to feel good during the day, it's going to help. Same. You know, at work, I look at a computer screen almost the whole day. I've got to be top notch. At my job, I look for errors. That's what I do. I look for errors from doctors, from technicians. If I'm not able to pay attention, if I'm yawning, mm -hmm. a mistake could happen. Well, that could be a big mistake. It could be a big mistake. And so on a day-to-day -day basis, I take it just for that mental, physical, cognitive, you know, ability that it, that it provides. After the workout, let's speak a little bit about what we did for folks throughout the day and the cognitive benefits client uh, folks get when taking our product uh, the two biggest ones that are going to push you beyond the workout the two mm -hmm. biggest ingredients that'll push you beyond the workout one is going to be choline and the second is going to be the l tyrosine so choline uh the way that it works is you you know you take it in the supplement it gets absorbed into the bloodstream and the form of choline that we're using is choline by tartrate um, so it's not uh the quickest to pass what's called the blood brain barrier and to get into the brain and so it takes time some of it doesn't actually get through the brain, so it stays in the bloodstream where it's shown to help with muscle contraction and liver health. Uh, but then the choline that is able to get through the brain is able to get converted into a very specific and important neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. And that's for memory, mood, um, all sorts of stuff as far as cognitive and mental performance goes. But because it takes a while to get through that blood-brain barrier, mm -hmm. you're going to have a lasting effect far past the workout. Okay, so choline, that was also a product that people are slapping on their labels left and right, mm -hmm. and they don't actually have the, the yes. right amount. That's correct. We found that out. We're like, <laughs> they're like 500 milligrams, so that's great. We're going to give you exactly what we would give everybody else, mm -hmm. you know? We're like, no, this isn't, this isn't right. How are people getting away with that? So when it comes down to it, facilities, unless they're being audited by the FDA, they don't have to specify specific things within the ingredients. So they'll oh, say sure. choline by tartrate, 500 milligrams. But what they don't have to go into detail on is there's choline and then there's a salt called by tartrate. So you have to attach the two together. Choline by itself won't get absorbed. So absorption's horrendous. Gotcha. So you attach a salt to it and mm -hmm. it allows your body to absorb it. However, it's not all choline, it's choline by tartrate. So part of that is actually a salt. What we've done at Bullfit is we have gone in and we've actually separated the two of them out. So you'll see choline as mm -hmm. choline by tartrate with a specific milligram. And then underneath, you're going to see choline by tartrate with the total amount. So you can actually see the total amount you're getting, but you can actually see the specific amount of choline you're getting from the choline by tartrate, if that makes sense. And then secondly is the L-tyrosine, which is actually my favorite ingredient for you know kind of that mental boost that you can have one yeah. it's an amino acid so its safety profile is is unmatched there's uh -huh. really no side effects to l-tyrosine but that one also crosses the blood-brain barrier and gets right. converted into two different neurotransmitters dopamine mm -hmm. and norepinephrine so everything from mood motivation uh that reward center 
And then that norepinephrine is going to be motivation, energy, fat burning, all those other benefits. However, the interesting thing with L-tyrosine is it peaks in the blood after you take it about an hour to two hours after you take it. So you're going to get those benefits while you're working out, but you're going to get that peak Mm -hmm. halfway through or towards the end of your workout. And then it maintains elevated for eight hours in the bloodstream. And so you're going to get that continual effect throughout the whole day. Sure. And I remember way back when me and you were first talking in the gym, we were talking about Adderall. Mm-hmm. And then uh, having the ability, because ultimately what Adderall does, it's a prescription drug. It's, it's super strong, uh, very powerful, very habit-forming, so you have to be careful with it. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, it increases dopamine and norepinephrine oh, yeah. in a very synthetic way. Right. Well, when we bring in this L-tyrosine, which is a natural amino acid, it does it very slowly. It does it gradually and consistently, and it maintains in the body. Now, don't, right. don't get confused, right? Well, I'm not comparing L-tyrosine to Adderall, but the mechanism, mm-hmm. although it's very different, the end result is very similar. And I love that the L-tyrosine can last for an extended period of time. So you get that benefit far oh, yeah. past just exercising in the gym. Yeah, it, I remember that conversation, and I appreciate you. But yeah, I was a, a guinea pig for ADHD in the 90s. You know, probably ground zero. <laughs> With uh, Ritalin Mm -hmm. and um, so many of us were. We were talking about how I I take Adderall, and I noticed that um, I have to take I take far less when I take a certain amount of tyrosine. And when you told that to me, when you explained that to me, it really blew my mind. And um, with me, I'm at about a fifth or even a sixth of what I was initially prescribed. That's awesome. So, and I think that effect can go far beyond just me or you. I think multiple people will notice, you know, if they want to, like, man, I'm just feeling better throughout the day. Maybe I can pull back a little on something else. Dude, and that's another reason why I pro- probably feel a lot better. Yeah, I just feel good. So that Absolutely. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But those are the two big, as far as mental cognitive performance, uh, two big ingredients that I love, mm-hmm. which then also creatine plays a huge role as far as mental and cognitive yeah, performance as well. Is there any other ingredients that we can touch on just so people firmly understand why we are the best pre-workout? So the last one that I'm obsessed with that I feel like doesn't get a lot of hype is called betaine. And there's a couple reasons why I love betaine. Glad you brought this um, And so a lot of pre-workouts, they don't have it. Some newer ones coming out, they're starting to put it in because we're starting to really see some literature on how effective it is. One of the things that betaine does is it works uh, to hydrate the cells. And so one of the things that we're chasing in the gym uh, is that pump, right? That mm-hmm. feeling of just feeling strong, uh, the swelling, the pump, the look, and betaine can assist in that by hydrating the cells, pulling water into the cells. While the pump is great, hydrating the cells will actually allow the muscle cell to respond better to stress. And when you're working out the muscle, you're stressing it. And so it'll actually help with endurance and performance. Uh, but the, the last thing with betaine uh, that I love uh, that I don't think a lot of people know is it works as what's called a methyl donor. A lot of times when we take in supplements, especially vitamins, uh, the form that they're in, they're not active. So we can't take them and then they go to work and do all these great things in the body. We take them and then our body has to activate them. And one of the ways that it can do that is, is by methylating or donating what's called a methyl group to a specific vitamin or an amino acid. So a great example is vitamin B9 Mm -hmm. uh, or vitamin B12. Uh, A lot of people are not able to do that on their own. They don't feel good, uh, mental fog, depression, uh, energy sluggish. And so betaine actually works as a methyl donor. And so as we take it in, as it's hydrating the cells, it also has the ability to donate that methyl group and actually activate certain amino acids or vitamins. Uh And one amino acid that I can change or activate is called histidine. And we can actually take that histidine, we can donate a methyl group from the betaine Mm -hmm. to create a new amino acid called methionine. Well, methionine is the building block to creatine. And we've talked in depth on how much I love creatine, on how effective creatine is. And if we can make more of it on our own while supplementing, more benefit. And so betaine, which more companies are starting to realize, starting to put in their pre-workouts, we've had it in since the beginning. Endurance, hydration, and then the ability to activate vitamins, activate amino acids is, is fantastic. And that's one of my, I think it's one of the top ingredients for overall performance. And you stack that with creatine, it's a game changer. Okay, so it helps with the pump a lot. Oh, absolutely. 
hey, guess what? what? Guess what I'm going to ask you about now? Caffeine. Yes. So caffeine, everybody understands caffeine, right? I would, all get caffeine. I would say, yeah, most people do. Why 250 on the caffeine? Great question. So you're going to see in different pre-workouts from no caffeine, I've seen up to 500 milligrams of caffeine. The reason we went with 250 in the bodacious specifically is one, it's enough caffeine that even if you're a caffeine junkie, you're going to fill it. Uh, it's not going to hit you like a freight train, but you're going to fill it. Anything above 250, in my opinion, that's when you start to notice the jitters, the anxiety, and some of those negative effects that can come from caffeine. And when you start to get those negative effects, you need to start adding in other ingredients to, to combat those negative effects. We wanted something as clean, as simple as possible without delivering those negative effects. So that 250 mark, I found most people can tolerate it very well. Um, if you're sensitive to it, it's gonna hit you pretty hard, but for most of us, it's just gonna feel about right. But then at the same time, when you start getting too high in caffeine, you actually cause what's called vasoconstriction. So instead of opening the blood vessels, you're gonna constrict them. Mm. Well, if you're constricting your blood vessels, you're inhibiting blood flow. And as we're trying to get that pump, as we're trying to get muscle to the blood, if we have too much caffeine, we're actually fighting against those other ingredients that we've put in there to open the blood vessels. And so that 250 mark is just a good, safe and effective mark to produce the energy, the ambition to get to the gym without having the negative jitters, anxiety, and without causing too much vasoconstriction. Another thing to think about is the 250 milligrams that are in the bodacious. If you need more caffeine later on in the day, whether that's an energy drink, whether that's a little bit of our cowabunga, you're not going to go over the FDA's recommended 400 milligrams in a day. So that way you could actually take both of our products, mm -hmm. the Cowabunga and the Bodacious, and you're still within the safe limits that the FDA has set forth. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, can't wait to see you on the next one.